All right, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to have a look at how we can do conversation history and also memory inside of Langchain expression language. We've got a range of different imports at the top here, some that you'll be probably quite familiar with. And there's also this format document that allows us to take in a document and a prompt and return a string as well. And that one's probably new. We have a vector database that we've set up from our previous lesson. And so what we're doing is basically just having two documents where I currently work for James and also his age. And we're using the OpenAI embeddings for that and setting up our RAG retriever. We then have a template that says, given the following conversation and a follow-up question, rephrase the follow-up question to be a standalone question in its original language. We have a chat history. And so what we're gonna be covering on this lesson is how do we get the chat history in? Uh, and then we have the follow up input, which is the question. We return the basically uh, just a standalone question. So This is our condensed question prompt. We then have an answer that uses the context and that context is gonna come from our retriever from the question that we got back from this prompt here. We've also got a default document template, which will take in the page content and it will then combine multiple pages using the document prompt. So you can see here, it will format each document to get document strings. And then after that, we join those together. And then we've got a prompt, which just has the page, con page content. So basically all of this combined documents gets associated with a variable of page content. Now, looking at the chat history, what we've decided to do is we have our chat history, which is a list of messages that could either be a human message, a system message or an AI message. And so we can create a buffer, which is just an empty string. And we're just going to loop through each message and check to see what type of message that is. And we'll add the appropriate bit of string at the prefix of each individual message, whether it's a human, an assistant or a system message, and then we'll return the buffer. Now it's important to do this step using language chain expression language because you do have to make sure that all of the types eventually converge to a string type when you're using your prompt formatting. We set up something called a runnable map, which is exactly the same as something called the runnable parallel. But I thought to demo that sometimes you might experience a runnable map and it's basically just a runnable parallel. We have the standalone question, which says, take the chat history and format that chat history. We also have the condensed question prompt. So we take the chat history, push that into the condensed question prompt. We then get the chat open AI model and then we get it to answer the question. We also have the context here, and you can see that's getting the standalone question. It's uh, piping that into the retriever, and then those are then those retrieved documents are then being combined. And we have the question here, which is then the standalone question from before. And this makes up our conversational Q&A chain, where we have our inputs, we then have our context, and all of that ends up getting piped into the answer prompt, which you can see here. We then pass that to the chat model. So let's have a look and see what happens. We just make sure that all of these have been run. And I've got to go and get the retriever too. So now we can invoke our Q&A chain with the question, where did James work and the chat history. Now the problem is at the moment in Langchain expression language, you do have to add the chat history manually and they haven't done a way for automating that. So the best way at the moment is to use something like memory where you would set a conversational buffer memory with an output key and the input would be associated with the question. You can return the messages to be true, which you should do for the above function to work. And then what we do is we say load the memory. So runnable pass through dot assign and we get the chat history and we make a runnable lambda that gets the memory dot load load memory variables and it's using that function on the item getter history. After that, then we set our standalone question key to have a question and a chat history. We then have the condensed question prompt, the chat open AI, the string parser, and then basically we get the retrieve documents which get passed into the retriever, the standalone question and our final inputs where we have the combined documents as the context and the question as the item question from a previous step. And then after that, then what we do is we take the final inputs, pipe that into the answer prompt, pipe that into the model and get the docs. And so the chain does a couple of things. So the first thing is we get the loaded memory. 
And then we go into the standalone question, which will get us a single question given the chat history. After that, then we go and get the retrieved documents. So using the standalone question, we then pass that into the retriever to get some relevant documents. And after that, then we get the standalone question and reassign it with a key of question, right? And then after we've got that, then we pass it into the answer, which has the final inputs, which is the context. So those documents, we then get those as the context key. And also then we get the question from the previous step here, you can see, and then we pipe that in to the answer prompt and get the chat model to respond. And we also pass in the docs. So sometimes it can be good to read this to the start, but also you saw me sort of going, well, we've got this final inputs, but it's not really its own chain. It's sort of inside the answer. And the answer is sort of using the final inputs, which then get passed into an answer prompt, which then get passed into chat open AI. So it's important to just sort of see where do the dictionaries flow? Like, can you see how the chain is being created? And then obviously this would, you know, you would just pass in a question, where did I work? And then it will pass the, the answer and the relevant documents that are used to answer that. Now, the thing is, if we run this, you'll see that at the moment it doesn't have any chat history. So what you would normally do is you would do memory.load variables. And so the next time this function would run, the loaded memory, if we scroll back up here, is a function that will basically run and it will and it will assign and pipe that into pipe that to the, the item getter or history basically. So that's basically it in a nutshell. So you can see now that we've done the load variables, that there's actually a bit of history in there. So when this line gets executed, we will actually have some chat history the next time it was run. And that's basically how you add conversational history and memory inside of Langchain expression language.